In this video, we're going to try and tie together the concepts that we've covered in the last couple of videos relating to the um, non-ideal characteristics of A, the open loop gain. We saw that for internally compensated operational amplifiers, the open loop gain A sub S was actually, or the open loop gain A was actually a function of frequency. And we saw that it had a single time constant low pass filter characteristic to it. We saw that A of S could be put into this form where omega sub B was the cutoff frequency. Frequently that cutoff frequency Omega sub b is uh, in radians per seconds, and frequently that cutoff frequency f sub b, which is the cutoff frequency in hertz, will be down around 10 hertz or 10 cycles per second. Then we also saw in another video that the closed loop gain for an inverting amplifier given a non-ideal A0, in other words, A0 was not infinite, A0 was finite, we saw that the gain term, the closed loop gain term for the inverting amplifier could be put into this form right here. And you'll recall that we said it was very satisfying because if A0 uh, did go to infinity, then this term right here would go to zero and would be left with the closed loop gain term negative R2 over R1 for an inverting amplifier with infinite um, open loop gain. So this was the closed loop gain assuming a finite A0. Now we didn't derive it, but you can go through a similar type of a derivation for the non-inverting. You find that you get the exact same equation, only the numerator has the gain term for the non-inverting ideal op amp or the in non-inverting amplifier with um, infinite open loop gain. So, frequency dependency of A and the dependency of the closed loop gain when you have a finite open loop gain. Inverting, non-inverting. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this frequency dependency and insert it into this closed loop gain expression for both the inverting and the non-inverting. Let's just do it for the inverting and then we'll say you can do the same thing for the non-inverting. So in place of A0, we're going to write this expression right here. And when you then take this and you've, you've got this divided by another fraction, take this, invert and multiply, expand it, and then make the assumption that A0 is much greater than 1 plus R2 over R1, which it typically is. A0 is going to be on the order of 50,000, 100,000, 200,000. And generally speaking, this is on the order of 10, maybe 100, or maybe just really at an extreme, maybe 1,000. So using this, then we can simplify this expression down to this equation where the closed loop gain as a function of s can be put into this form here, which, as you note, is also of the form of a low-pass filter. In this case, the gain term is negative r2 over r1, which we're talking about the inverting. So the um, dc gain term is just the negative r2 over r1, the k term. And the cutoff frequency is omega t divided by 1 plus r2 over r1, where omega t is the unity bandwidth, the unity gain bandwidth, uh, a0 times omega sub b. Again, you can do the same kinds of calculations and come up with a very similar expression, only the dc gain term is 1 plus r2 over r1. It's just a non-inverting gain term. This is significant. What this is saying is that when we're working with operational amplifiers that are internally compensated and have finite gains, we'll get a similar low-pass filter relationship with it. Only now, the cutoff frequency, instead of being down around 10 hertz, the cutoff frequency is going to be significantly higher. The cutoff frequency is going to be at omega sub t divided by this 1 plus R2 over R1. And the DC gain, instead of it being A0 like 
50, you know, 100 dB, 100,000, the DC gain is going to be the closed loop gain that we've calculated for the either the non -inver or for the inverting or the non-inverting um, amplifier configurations.